What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you a recap and thought process for Stargate SG-1 and why I th- or how I think they could have made the last couple of seasons a little bit better. So overall, I still enjoy the show. It's not it's not a review as far as the show being bad in any sense of the word. It was it's still my favorite sci-fi TV show at 10 seasons and in general doing an over and generally a very good job on the show. Um, I still enjoy watching it. So I had an urge to rewatch the show, but at about 20 to 22 episodes per season and 10 seasons and the episodes being about 45 minutes each, it would take a really long time to get through it. So I thought I would do in Teal's Teal's words, a medical strike watch through of this um, show, uh, notably the first eight seasons, um, to see how fast I could get, or what would be the fastest way to get through the show, cover as much of the important um, story arcs as possible, and see if I can come up with a better way that they could have handled the transition from the ghoul to the Ori um, better than I feel like they handled it. So. The overarching idea going into it was I watched the first two episodes and last two episodes of each um, season so that um, I would get the major overarching topics um, of the season. So, you know, for example, um, dealing with um, the or the effects of dealing with uh, Ra and then Apophis. Um, we get introduced to the various sons of our system lords like Ball and Camulus. Uh, Cronus, uh, Nearty, Hathor, and all of them, um, and in general, and then ultimately watching some of the episodes throughout the season. So, for example, early on, um, the first episode, as far as meeting with the Asgard, the um, alliance with the Tok'ra, Teal'c ultimately um, helping start the Jaffa Rebellion and Jaffa Nation with Braytac. So all the so basically the key episodes throughout each season that dealt with those important topics and then ultimately like with the Asgard, um, the various interactions with that Colonel O'Neill and then um, Major Carter and all, uh, how they dealt with Asgard and the replicators and ultimately the re- introduction of the replicators and that story arc. So overall, I that's kind of the um, frame I went with. And so there wasn't any particular episodes, especially after the Asgard episode, because the season premieres and season finale episodes, notably the first two and last two episodes of each season after the second one, um, dealt well enough with those various story arcs to make it pretty easy to not have to worry about which episodes to watch and not watch. Um, but when you're wa- when watching all of the episodes, they ha- they spend a lot of time with um, all the different story arcs. So notably the Gould because they're the major initial villain, then the Replicators and the rise of the Replicators, the ultimate um, it- the continued interactions and ultimate downfall with the Asgard, and them having given their knowledge over to the humans. So that all thought I thought was good, and then ultimately by the end of season eight, as far as the uh, final battle on Dakara and wiping out the replicators, defeating Anubis and Ball. So from here, I actually felt that um, they could have handled the transition be- from the replicators and Ghoul to the Ori in the form of having Anubis be become an Ori rather than um, um, trying to reclaim being a system lord and taking over the galaxy. The whole taking over the galaxy part was fine in my opinion, but it would have served as a better transition if by um, um, remembering his knowledge of, of being an ancient because he's able to control the various devices that he realizes that he still has her power and that he can pose as a ghoul or I hybrid god and then ultimately deal with becoming an or I heading out to that ga- or he can still escape the um, galaxy um, with the humans and the ghoul and head out to the or I galaxy then um, spend time there and then come back to attack 
um, the galaxy with the Earth and As the Asgard and all of them. So kind of do like another 10 years later and still have, for example, the um, SGC being run by General Land Landry, um, um, what's his name, uh, Mitchell, as far as being the new leader of SG-1. Um, we can have uh, Colonel Carter and Teal and Daniel um, still be a part of the SG or SG One. Um, age them up those ten years, and for example, um, Daniel now actually does work as a consultant from the base. And the reason he doesn't want to join SG One is because he, of his age. Uh, Colonel Carter is, could potentially be a general, I guess, but regardless of her rank, she's also the same just because she's older and she has more responsibilities with the SGC, the Alpha site, the different races and all that, that now that um, um, O'Neill has reti retired, that she, um, she's the next in line with dealing with Asgard because Thor has worked with her and um, understand or they have, basically they have that prior relationship to work. So for me, that would have posed a better threat with having Anubis be that hybrid and then ultimately deal or help in the creation of the Orisai. Um, with uh, Marina Baccarin, I guess. I forget her name is, but... Um, the, and then basically continue from there and have um, Vala still show up and uh, with a rumor that there's a Gould um, ancient hybrid running around who's returned to the galaxy converting world and then basically have the rest of the seasons play out and have um, Anubis be the co-ruler with um, the Orisai and make that progression and still have the series end the same but it just feels like the, that transition felt like it didn't basically seasons eight and nine or sorry nine and ten didn't really feel it basically that transition from eight to nine was like a stopping point with between the um change the change up of the cast and of the gold and replicator story arcs but then bring in the story of the Ori and the ancients where they could have had a better transition in this way by having anubis um be that transition into the or the Ori story arc kind of like they did with the rest of the story arcs where we start with a gold and one star or sorry, yeah, the gold and the one stargate they expand on the multiple stargate system and then um they introduced the as the the Nox, which they ended that nicely. But then they introduced the um, Asgard, and they progressed that, and they slowly work in the replicators and the rising through the, the replicators, the changing power structure with the Gould system lords, the introduction of the Tok'ra, and all that. Like over the basically over the first eight seasons, it was a nice slow transition over those various story arcs, and then um, ultimately bridging them into the um culminating battle over dakara um so by ha and by ultimately having anubis escape at the end of season eight it would have made sense to have him stick around but because he and have a and basically it provides a better better payoff by having him end up in the Ori galaxy because the explosion and the deal with the replicators um, maybe he even makes a deal with the replicator the replicator carter and he ends out ends up out in the Ori galaxy where he could even potentially learn there of his power and because he's a ghoul um he still wants to pose as a god and realizes that having the orisai would allow for even more power and bridging that gap with the power of the Gould and the Ancients together. So, um, for me, that so why so like I said, it goes back to what I said at the beginning of the episode in review is that I didn't dislike the Ori episodes and seasons. It's just that there was very little translation or transition into it, and it felt like a very easy completion as far as defeating the Ori um and so I don't know it just felt like they could have spent maybe one more season um on all of that stuff to expand on the stories with um Anubis as an ancient um and then or as an ancient and, and a ghoul to um give rise to the Ori empire and bring translate them over um Granted, it would have, it would have been seen as a um, 
another you know big bad villain but in general for me it would have worked just to ha tie all that together because the anuba stuff in general they were doing a good rise to power for anubis and i like that they were he was trying to find all these various ways to take out the ghoul leadership and regardless of whether he gets all the gold under his thumb or not having a payoff of him ultimately leading and having the power of the Ori with him and ultimately the ghoul would have worked nicely or he ultimately takes over all the ghoul empire and moves them out over into the Ori empire to merge the two to have even greater a greater power that potentially the humans and the asgard would not be able to overcome and have those extra couple of seasons to um, develop the uh, lore of the Ori and the Ancients, then ultimately have the humans win again. Um, so that's all there is for that. And to round it out, um, I got to thinking while um, watching the series that um, the Stargate Origins series that they did when they released the Stargate Command app. app was a wasted opportunity where they could have done a full prequel series dealing with the ancients and the creation of the stargate system where they do stargate origins cre create the um stargate system they don't necessarily have to create the whole ancient empire from scratch or do like the rise of the ancients that could have that can potentially be done in the form of a movie but have a series where they deal with the creation of the stargate system tie it in with stargate universe where they send out the seed ships where the um, ships are putting all the stargates on the various planets um the ancients go out and, and basically do a exploratory thing where they show how they build the Stargate system to begin with and then lead that directly into the plague that um, took them out and end with the creation of Atlantis to tie that in with um, the creation of the T Stargate Atlantis TV show, but not necessarily um, have like, you know, lead right into it to the second when the Atlantis team shows up, but how, um, how they created the... Um, how they or end with how they created Atlantis, have it sink into the ocean because of the war with the Wraith and the plague and all of that stuff, and end there. But that would have, to me, that would have been a better Stargate origin show. And if all these rumors are to be believed that there's a Stargate show in the works or people are wanting to do it, that's kind of what I'm hoping to. Um, that they, what I'm hoping that they do with the Star, new Stargate show, if they do create one where they deal with the Rise of the Ancients, potentially even bring in the Alliance with the Nox and the Asgard and the, the other, basically the four races and how that came about the, and then have, you know, episodes and story arcs where they deal with the um, Scholars of Rose, how they seeded the various lore on Earth and um, how they created the repository of knowledge because they knew about the plague and that they would need that knowledge passed on eventually and this was their way of doing that so that's um all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions comment feedback a favorite episode or anything like that you can comment on this post on Twitter at Patel N01. The website is Headphones Neil Dahl Reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.